Today I'm going to fix this Grohe uh, pulled out spray head. It's been broken for a while. The, uh, you can see the button here, it's completely gone. And when you open it, it's in spray mode. Uh, so I ordered a new replacement straight from Grohe. Here's the part number. Uh, the unit is a little bit more plasticky than the one that is currently installed there. Uh, this is a very solid piece versus the replacement that is very plasticky. At the end of the hose, you're gonna find an O-ring. Uh, this should have been a replacement with the spray head. Uh, it's supposed to come with it, mine did not. So I'm just gonna leave this one here and then have Grohe send me a replacement. If you do get any water coming out of the top of the uh, head, that's exactly why, because this O-ring has been damaged or is missing. So keep an eye out for that. If you do need to install the flow restrictors, uh, here are the instructions that I got from Grohe. Uh, notice the O-rings, those are gonna go to the outside. This is the uh, 2.5, sorry, 2.2, and this is the 1.5. But again, I wouldn't recommend using them if you want more water pressure at the house. I have installed the uh, 1.5 uh, gallons per minute check valve here just to see what it did as a flow restrictor. And actually, the, uh, the pressure that it comes out is just too, too little to be useful to really rinse dishes. So I really don't recommend using that uh, flow restrictor. Now I need to remove that chuck valve, that 1.5 gallon per minute one. Uh, it's stuck in there nicely, uh, so I'm gonna need to use a needle nose plier there to kind of gently pull it out you know wiggle back and forth without damaging it. I now installed the replacement part without any of the check valves and the flow restrictors. Uh, you can see a big difference in the flow. So it's definitely much better without any of those type of restrictors. And uh, here's the old unit. Uh, at one point you may want to uh, open up and clean the aerator that's in here. Uh, this fits a, I think, 11 64th socket wrench. I just happen to have the pliers, so I'm going to be very careful not to scrape it, but you can use the pliers and kind of open it and look what's inside and clean that up. I'll show you what that looks like. With the pliers, I just uh, was able to unscrew that, and you could do hand, hand unscrewing after that. And you can see here the aerator is quite filthy. It hasn't been cleaned in a while. So look for that periodically. Uh, you also want to sit it set the whole thing in, inside a uh, bath of vinegar to clean up all the little holes here and remove all the scale. That will help you clean, uh, get a really good pressure out of those holes, out of those jets. Now, one point in the life of this uh, spray head, you are likely going to need to clean up the aerator. See how it's all filled with uh, buildup there from the water. Uh, once you've removed the cover, the aerator is right here. You just use a needle nose pliers to kind of remove this piece if it's stuck. You might need to just pull it out. And then it's got another O-ring in here, which you can you know, easily pull out. Hold on one sec. Now you pull it out. And now you have the aerator there. You can just push from the back. And this is your aerator. Uh, it needs to be cleaned up periodically in order to work well. Again, you know, if you put it in a vinegar bath, water and vinegar bath overnight, a lot of this scaling will go away. If not, you're gonna have to replace this whole piece.